All right. So for those of you that don't know, my name is Jake Robinson. Um, channel Brother Boost. This is my 1997 Honda Civic EX Coupe um, manual. So I just recently got finished turboing this thing on an extreme budget, but I bought all new parts, nothing used. So in this video, I kind of, th this is not a building video. I do have a bunch of so every everything I've done on this car is documented. You can find videos on it from stock to turbo every step of the way. So if you're looking for that, go check out my channel. But in this video, I just kind of wanted to explain and talk through how to turbo your Honda Civic, not going balls to the wall, stock motor, and might be a surprise and a little risky, but stock ECU. So speaking of stock ECU, I have never once had an issue so far with this being not tuned on a stock ECU. Now, it is on only about five to seven pounds of boost, which I control by the wastegate spring, just a five pound spring. So anyway, basically, let me pull up a little parts list here just so I don't forget anything basically i started out by buying the turbo uh it's just a small max speeding rods turbo um and then so so i did not just go on and buy a turbo kit i did some research and found out that you could most likely build one yourself for cheaper with better parts so i got on i bought a max speeding rods turbo um i bought a intercooler kit for a 97 Civic, which I did have to um, modify, not modify, but it, it, it wasn't just a bolt right up. So what I did there is I got two pieces of angle iron, welded them to the bottom side of my frame down here, and the intercooler bolted to those. So it's only mounted on the bottom, which you might be able to see. I don't know, probably not. So I got, the, I got that mounted, and then I ran all of the intercooler piping. Now let me back up a little bit on the intake manifold. So on these D16 Y7 engines, the intake manifold, it's just, it comes like the throttle body is pointed up. So I didn't really want a 90 degree bend in there. So what I did for just better airflow and to get rid of that bin is I put a D16 Y8 intake manifold on there. I might have said eight before. It was a Y7. I put a Y8. I do have a video on how to swap that. It's just a straight swap. It's easy. So anyway, I got the intercooler all mounted up, um, ran the piping. I did have to buy an extra 45 degree elbow for coming out of the turbo to the other side of the intercooler. Um, so then I wanted this to be a top mount turbo. So I bought a top mount turbo manifold, exhaust manifold. I knew that it wasn't standard, so I was gonna have to deal with maybe some custom things. Now, if you get a bottom mount log manifold, um, you're probably not going to have to do many modifications to anything because most stuff is made for that and you could probably get a, a downpipe already made for that. But I wanted top mount because it looks coolest. So I got the manifold, I put the turbo on, then I bought an exhaust, well, so you can buy a downpipe on eBay, which is a turbo flange to bolt to your turbo, and then literally just a 90 that could go up or down. Um, so that would be perfect if you're wanting to just go right out of the hood. But I wanted a full exhaust out the back. So I bought that because I knew I would need the flange to bolt to the turbo anyway. And then I, uh, I knew I would use that downturn somewhere. So I also got on, I think Amazon and bought a stainless, I think it's a two and a half inch 
uh, exhaust piping kit. And that is just a bunch of random bins, straights of stainless pipe that you can use to fab up your exhaust. So I have a little 110 welder. I bought stainless wire for it. And I have a buddy who is a, a welder for a living. And I tacked it and I had him do the welding on it. So basically what I did was I took that kit and I just kind of started eyeballing it using the bins that it had. I came right out, turned down, went back this way and turned a 90 underneath the car to bolt up to the stock exhaust location. And that's my downpipe. Um, I have zero experience with any anything like that. So doing that was pretty cool and relatively easy. Then once we got the turbo done, I used the rest of the exhaust pipe to go all the way out the back. Um, so it's all the way out. And, and I bought a muffler from Hybrid Racing. So it's not, your, I, I tried to de-rice it a little bit, you know. I got some O2 bungs drilled into my exhaust and welded, had the bungs welded in there. Um, your oil pan so you have to take your oil pan out drain your oil take your oil pan out and you have to have a, a bung welded into your oil pan which that is your drain from your turbo down to your oil pan now on this top mount turbo ideally you want the drain to be coming right out of the bottom of your turbo so it has full drain on this top mount you can't do that it just won't fit so it's it's kind of at a a little bit less than a 45 from the bottom of the turbo and it's a 45 degree fitting so it comes 45 out of the turbo and then straight down into the oil pan with 10 a.m. fittings so with that I just bought a uh, a uh, basically turbo drain kit this is a T T this is a T3, T4 turbo. So everything I was looking up was T3, tur T3, T4 turbo drain downpipe, you know. So there's that. Now to feed the oil with turbo, because you've got an oil feed line coming in here. I bought a, I think it was a glow shift sandwich plate, which threads you take your oil filter off, you thread that where the oil filter goes, and the oil filter threads to that plate. So it's sandwiched between your oil filter and your block. That's, that sandwich plate has ports in it that you can thread in fittings and have lines coming out of it. You could, you could do an oil pressure gauge like that. And in this case, we just ran a, this braided line from that sandwich plate to the top of the turbo. So that sandwich plate or that uh oil feed and oil drain kit that i bought came with the feed line maybe it was separate i can't remember if the oil feed was separate from the oil drain kit either way just just look up t3 t4 oil feed kit oil drain kit you'll probably find one with it all together I bought that, came with all the fittings, all the uh, gaskets to literally plumb it right in. So that was, that was perfect. So now uh, we're to the wastegate. Um, I just went on eBay, I bought a Rev9 wastegate just because I've heard people talk about those before and didn't do much research on it, to be honest with you. I just saw somebody say that's what they use, so that's what I use. So I got that Rev9 wastegate from eBay. And then I bought, then I bought a wastegate dump uh, pipe. And what that was, was just a flange with a pipe coming out. That was your wastegate dump. I ended up, uh, it, it was, that took, the, the wastegate took a little bit of experimenting to really figure out where I wanted it. So one thing about these turbo manifolds that i read is that you really want it to be you want the wastegate uh, to be mounted in the center of the manifold that way 
you're not relieving pressure off of one side versus the other. It's evenly distributed right out of the middle. Luckily, the center uh, wastegate, or these center um, manifolds, these top mount manifolds have a center wastegate mounting point. So my, um, I'm pretty sure my wastegate dump actually came with a little 90 elbow also, which I used that. So I put that 90 right onto the manifold. Then my wastegate's coming out here. And then I took that dump tube. I actually had to cut the, the, the tube off of the flange of the dump tube, rotate it and re-weld it. So I should have an overlay here of what that looks like, but it's just coming straight down and it dumps right out of the bottom, right behind the bumper. It's perfect. Uh, so that's pretty much it for that. Now, you might be thinking, how the heck, or how, why the heck did he do this without a tune? Well, to be honest with you, I, I, I didn't, so I wanted to save a little bit of money. I didn't want to go find an old P28 ECU, have Honda to put in it for $700, and then I have to go spend more money on a tune. Um, so I'm like, I'm probably not the only one. Yes, that is 100% the right way to do it, but I didn't really want to go with that ECU anyway because eventually, like we all say, I'm gonna be case swapping this and I wanna go with a Haltech ECU. So I didn't wanna go the ECU route twice. And I didn't wanna spend the two grand on the Haltech ECU right away. So I'm like, let me do an experiment here. If we blow up the D-Series, then that's just gonna accelerate my case swap into existence. So what I did, I did some reading and I did a very old school way of tuning. And what I used was an FMU, a fuel management unit, which I got for like 150 bucks off of uh, Throttle's website. What those are is it basically, it has a port going to your intake manifold to draw or to uh, basically read vacuum. And what, what that does is the, the more vacuum it pulls, the, uh, or I guess the more pressure, less vacuum, so the more pressure it pushes on this valve, which closes off or restricts your fuel return line, which in return forces more fuel out of your injectors, more fuel pressure to your injectors. Because basically with tuning, I mean, this is very, very simplifying tuning, but one of the main things with tuning is you need more fuel when you have more power because if you don't add fuel and you just add power then your engine's going to lean out and blow up you need that extra fuel to keep your cylinders cool and just to feed the engine so that supposedly takes care of that now if i was running any more boost than five pounds i would not be doing this i would not recommend it if you're wanting to run 10 pounds um, I, I'd say it's going to blow up. I have beat on this thing and had zero issues with it. So it appears to be working pretty good for me. Um, those, those FMUs come in different ratios. The heaviest one was a 12 to 1, which I did some research and it seems that the 12 to 1 is what you want on this type of setup with the stock injectors I had. So. That's what I did, seems to be working. Um, so $150 option versus probably $1,000 in ECUs and tuning. I think it's, it's working. Um, so then really the last part of it is spark. I, had, I, I never looked at the spark plugs in this thing when I bought it, slapped the turbo on, ran it for a bit, it did great. Then when I started to do a pool, and it came in the boost, it would misfire. It would like, and I'm like, well, that's probably my spark plugs. They're not gapped tight enough. So the boost will actually blow out your spark and you won't have that explosion in your cylinder there. And the reason I know that is because I 
have a stage, my, my Subaru was stage three and the tuner talked about that before. So it was just in there. So I bought new spark plugs, gapped them down to I think 30 thousandths and fixed that problem. So I am not running a blow off valve. Basically what a blow off valve does is when you're doing a pool and you let off, it releases that pressure that's built up in your in your piping and turbo so it doesn't backfeed out the turbo because that's that can be hard on the turbo now this was a budget build so i cut out anything i need i i could the blow off valve i didn't think was necessary i'm only running five pounds of boost like i've said a million times and this is a cheap turbo so worst case scenario if the turbo goes bad I'll just buy the exact same turbo, throw a bolt blow off valve on there and see if it lasts that long again. It was like a hundred dollar turbo. So I blocked off the hole in the intercooler piping. It's aluminum, so I had to have somebody aluminum weld it. Blocked that off and I'm not running a blow off valve. So uh, to have a little bit more control since I, I, I'm not tuning this thing, I could run a boost controller and have even more control over the boost if I wanted to. So that might come in the future, but um, for now, I think it's good. Uh, guys, turbo kits are extremely simple. The most complicated part about them is the tuning part about it. So if you have a Honda Civic and you're wanting to learn and you're wanting to put a turbo on it, do it, it's easy. These things, in my mind, are bulletproof. It's a freaking Honda Civic, they go forever. So, perfect car to do it on. I wouldn't necessarily do it on my daily driver unless you were going to get a tune, but I don't know. I have had people message me say they did this exact setup and they've been running theirs, daily driving it for years. So, only time will tell, but We'll see. Now, let's move on to a couple things that aren't super necessary that I also did. That's in the interior. Now, I got a boost gauge because I wanted to make sure I was truly getting around five pounds of boost and I had everything set up right. So I got a boost gauge from Glowshift, a cheaper company, but the boost gauge works. Now, I also got a wideband gauge which measures your air fuel ratio. So that, I, I really wanted to see what this FMU did to the, to the air fuel ratio. However, my glow shift wideband gauge that was $200 did not work out of the box. I went through it multiple times. I have put a wideband gauge on my Subaru that worked just fine. It was AEM. So I, took the gauge off, sent it back to Glowshift. They said it was working fine. I don't know if, I'm just, if I just did something wrong. I don't know what I would have done wrong, but the gauge has never worked right. It turns on, but it either goes all the way rich or all the way lean, and it doesn't make sense when it does it. If it was as lean as what it said, the car would have blown up months ago. So it's just, it's not reading correctly. I've tried different O2 positions, I've got it on an angle like it tells me to do. I just, I don't really, I don't know. So that's, that part's frustrating. I can't give you guys an accurate wideband reading to see if it's lean or rich, but those are just some things I did. I put it on a pillar pod. And then uh, also these Civics, some of them don't come with a tachometer. I really wanted a tack, especially, I'm not just daily driving this thing. I mean, I'm kind of beating on it, so I want to see where my RPMs are. So I got on eBay and bought a gauge cluster with a tack and swapped that out. Um, another thing I did that I just looked at was my radiator fan. This piping, since I wanted to go out the back with the exhaust, the piping, it's kind of fished down in there in, in a tight space. So I bought a universal slim radiator fan that opened up a lot more space in there. All that was was wire the plug, cut the plug off your old one, wire it into the two wire, to the two wires on here, and you're good. It's universal, it just 
mounts right to the front of your radiator. So that was it. Now I also, when you get your intercooler, you're going to have to trim your bumper quite a bit. So expect that. Um, but honestly guys, I think that is pretty much it for the turbo build. Um, obviously you're going to need all your gaskets, which all the part, all these parts that I have talked about today, which are listed in the, in the bio down below, they do all come with gaskets. Now I was like putting stuff on, unbolting it, putting it on. I thought I'd have everything finished. So I tightened stuff up. Um, so I had to get on and buy gaskets multiple times because if you tighten the gasket down and then you break the seal, you don't want to reuse that gasket. It's not, it's not going to seal up correctly. Um, so really, that is the gist of my turbo build. If you guys want a detailed price breakdown, parts list price breakdown, comment below, let me know. I will make that for you. I'm planning on making it at some point, but motivate me to do it. Another thing I did was just to make this turbo look a little bigger and cooler, I threw a turbo blanket on there, which keeps your heat there and not, not into your intake so it don't heat soak. And that turbo is pretty close to the hood. It's like two inches or not two inches. It's like an inch to an inch and a half clearance to the hood. So I didn't really want to melt paint on the hood. I don't know if it would, but you know. Now another thing I just did recently, I didn't really want to, want to run an open turbo. I wanted to put an air filter on there. So I made a little cold air. I, it's, it's probably more of a hot air, but cold air intake. I 90 it right out of the turbo and went right into my filter. So that is, uh, that's it guys. Uh, it was extremely easy and I know everybody says this, but if I can do it, you can do it. If you've, if you've got tools, if you've changed the oil on your car before, you can do this and you should be able to, to do it with my videos. You should be able to watch my videos and understand what I did and you just copy it and you'll be fine. If you have any questions in any of those videos or this video, just comment down below and I'll answer it. I get one comment a month, so I'll see it. Um, but yeah, that's it. Very simple. It's easy to be intimidated by throwing a turbo on your car, but it's literally as easy as throwing a turbo on your car, in my opinion. Now, I did have to do some welding. You could probably get away with doing some welding or very minor welding, especially if you ran your exhaust out the hood. I, I like the OEM plus type deal. So that's why I wanted to run it out the back. But, uh, that was doing the exhaust was the most time consuming part of this. I could have done the whole turbo in a weekend if it wasn't for the exhaust. So yeah, it's easy. Um, anyways, I think that's all I got for you guys today. I know it was kind of a boring one, just a talking video, but I really wanted to help you out if you were thinking about turboing your car there is uh i did a ton of research on this so i just wanted to share with you that it's simple if you guys want to see anything let me go let me know go check out my channel for some of the older videos i have on this and uh do me a favor and like and subscribe so i can keep doing more stuff like this thanks for watching guys i'll catch you in the next one